everybody, it's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Friday, the 18th of December, 2020. We had the market uh, uh, still higher again this week. We ended on a weaker note uh, for the indexes. But again, we're still in a very positive market here. I consider it innocent till proven guilty. It's going to take a lot to change my mind. The only thing that's going to change my mind is price action. And here we can see on the daily chart of the S&P 500, we remain above that prior band of resistance, which was tested a week ago, it held as support, and we're still above that rising 20-day uh, moving average. On a shorter-term time frame, we're still positive here, holding above that month-to-date volume-weighted average price. The market got a little squirrely here at the end of the day with some uh, uh, index uh, stuff going on. But basically, you know, we also still have this trend line that is that is holding as well. We can I'm trying to extend it. There we go, and you can see that you know even if we break that trend line next week. It is only a representation that the rate of ascent is slowing. It doesn't mean it would reverse. We still have that 364, 363 as the key level to hold. Uh, the NASDAQ finished with a small loss here, one day off of an all-time high. So you got to be a fool to be bearish in that type of environment when we're showing higher highs and higher lows. The Russell 2000 on a weekly basis closed at a new high. Today we pulled back a little bit from yesterday's record closing. We're still in a phenomenal forceful uptrend I will not change my opinion unless price tells me to same with semiconductors they were a little bit flat here after that gap uh, they kind of you know went sideways after Tuesday but uh, still constructive action overall the biotechs are the stronger group right now they had gapped higher and uh, as I mentioned in a Wednesday video I think if you're long here your, your stop ought to be underneath this level 152 uh, since I've been talking about it bullishly after that breakout uh, the financials I don't want to talk about those. I don't think they're important. Uh, it's good to see that they are still moving higher, but there's still so many good stocks in the market out there. And then let's talk about Bitcoin because these moves were absolutely nailed. I had mentioned on uh, Monday night that I thought a breakout was imminent and it did break and really ran nicely from 19,000 to 23 and change here in this daily time frame. We also saw Litecoin take off and still continuing higher as is Ethereum and these guys still probably have some room to run. I've lightened my positions in all three of them slightly and am going to look for places to pull back. The way I trade uh, these uh, cryptos is differently than stocks. When they get these rallies, I feed some out, and then I look for the flushes lower. So let's go over to a four-hour time frame and look at the uh, at Bitcoin. And what I want to look at on Bitcoin is the volume-weighted average price from this move. Uh, I'm sorry, so this is Ethereum. 610 is the key level there. And in uh, Bitcoin, I think you're likely to see if we get a quick pullback down towards 21,000, that's about where uh, a pullback will go. That is, of course, also prior resistance. But great moves in there. I've been consistently bullish about these since mentioning them over here. Hopefully you're involved. If you look at my Twitter, you'll see that I have been talking about, uh, well, I didn't even get involved in this GNLN, but I'd mention it right here. I didn't get involved because of the light volume. Uh, I look for an average of 500,000 a day. I still think I might get involved in this one because it's got a great looking weekly chart. They do uh, weed vapor, you know, products basically, bongs and, and all the things those kids are doing these days. Uh, and I'm kidding there. Um, Anyways, the the uh, other stocks I had mentioned included Angie. I didn't get involved in this one. It ended up working nicely, but I took it off my list uh, right after this gap lower. I'd mentioned it bullishly on uh, Tuesday uh, night. It gapped lower Wednesday, and I said, you know what, with all this activity with these gaps like this, it just doesn't suit my personality. Hopefully, maybe some of you are involved, but it's not one for me. It's back above the volume-weighted average price off that peak, so the buyers are clearly back in control. RVP was a great example that I had been mentioning a, a number of times times on Twitter and in these videos uh, I had mentioned that you know I always sell some on the breakout because people who buy breakouts are ch you know typically chasing an uneducated money when the stock has already moved from nine dollars a share to fifteen dollars in a very short period of time sixty percent move and then buying a breakout just doesn't make sense I didn't expect it to fail like this but it completely failed uh, if you recall I had uh, mentioned it as a buy on Monday 
and uh, you know great move out of there and now it's back below that level I've taken my profits I've moved on risk management is always job number one OPK I had mentioned on Twitter today I'm not in this one yet but it's pinching between the volume weighted average price from this prior low and from that peak here's a weekly chart you can see it's got some room to run and looking at this what we saw today is it got back above that five-day moving average now the five-day moving average is advancing so I'm looking to get involved if it can get back above this level right here my stop likely uh, will go underneath that level what I'd really like to see is a rally up maybe a slight pullback and then continuation higher I'm not going to talk about any stocks here today I will save those for subscribers to Alpha Trends have a good weekend thanks for tuning in